We are now going to begin our study of circles. The first area that we're going to start with circles is just general characteristics, properties of circles, and in particular, circumference. Hopefully you have created the circle notes and you can take all of these notes on that if you would like. If not, you can just take them as you normally do in your notebook. Let's start with a circle. The definition of a circle is the locus of all points in a plane equidistant from a point. That word locus is different than the word locust, which is a word we use for grasshoppers. A locus is just a set of points that meet a certain, con certain condition. In this case, it is a locus of all points, which means it is the set of all points in a plane that is equidistant from a point. That point is called the center. So when we talk about a circle, we're talking about all the points that are the same distance from this, the center of the circle. We have some pieces of the circle that we could talk about or segments we create within a circle. The first is a chord. A chord is simply a segment with endpoints on the circle. A chord just connects two different points at two different spots on a circle. Key point is the endpoints are on the circle. It could go through the center, but it does not have to. There are many, many, many different chords on a circle. A diameter. This one you've seen quite a few times before. A diameter is simply a chord that passes through the center of the circle. Next we have a radius, which is a segment with one endpoint on the circle and one end point at the center of the circle. Again, there are many diameters and many radiuses, but they all have the same measurement. All radiuses will be the same for any given circle, and all diameters will be the same for any given circle. That cannot be tr said about a chord. There are many different chords on a circle and many different sizes for chords on any circle. Next we have circumference. Circumference is the distance around the circle. So the distance around the circle, notice it was just highlighted in blue in the picture. So that's your circumference. It's like walking around a circle. That would be doing the circumference. We find the circumference by taking 2 times pi times radius or pi times diameter. Either of those will give us the circumference of a circle. And remember pi, which is typically represented by the circle that looks like two t's connected together at the top, is approximately 3.14. But we all have our calculators, so we will not be using 3.14 in our calculations. We will actually use the pi button on your calculator. This will get us a much more exact answer. Let's do a problem here with some diameters and possibly radiuses. The information we're given is that circle X, Y, and Z have diameters of 22, 16, and 10 respectively. That word respectively means when we give the circles in the order of circle X, circle Y, circle Z, and then measurements, the order of the circles is the same as the order of the diameters. Since circle X was listed first and 22 millimeters was listed first, that means circle X has a diameter of 22. Circle X is the red circle. Now, putting 22 millimeters as a diameter could be a little bit tricky on my circle as I look at them, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the radius on instead. So I'm going to put a radius of 11. Next we have circle Y, which has a diameter of 16, which gives us a radius of 8. And lastly, they give us circle Z, which has a diameter of 10, which gives us a radius of 5. 
we have most of the circle here as far as the measurements, but let's see if we can identify the pieces that we don't have. We know this distance from E to X. We know the distance from G to Z. And we know the distance from F to Z. We also know that the distance from X to Y is 8. What we don't know is this little piece right here from Y to F. So that's what we're going to try and figure out. Look at the picture and see if you could come up with a way that you could figure out that measurement. As I look at it, I look at it in terms of the blue circle. For the blue circle right now, I know its diameter is 16. I also know that its radius is 8. I'm going to try and use one of those two measurements. I'm going to use the diameter. I know that from X across to Z would be a diameter. I know that distance is 16. But what I also know is that this piece from X to Y is 8, and this piece from F to Z is 5. That makes 13. So if the diameter is 16, and those two pieces take up 13, it leaves me with this little piece right here having to be 3. Let's see how many of the questions that helps me answer. First off, I have the question of how far is it from y to z, or y to g. So that's right there. I highlighted it in yellow with a yellow squiggly line. Well, we can figure that out pretty simply now that we have that small measurement of 3. We add up from y to f is 3, from f to z is 5, z to g is 5. So we have a total of 13 millimeters. Next, we have the question from E to Y. So that goes from E to Y. As we look at this, from E to X is 11, and from X to Y is 8. So we can figure that out simply by taking 11 plus 8, which gives us 19 millimeters. We could have done this another way as well. The red circle has a diameter of 22, and what we're actually going to be taking up is this small piece from Y to F. So we're going to subtract off this piece right here, which is 3. So 22 minus 3 would also give us 19. We have one question left, and that asks us, how far is it from E to G? That's from all the way across all of the circles. For this we can add up all of the small pieces. We have 11 plus 8 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5. We need to be real careful when we do this that we add the right pieces together. We have 5 plus 5 is 10 plus 3 plus 8 is 21 plus another 11 gives us 32 millimeters. We've now answered all the questions. Here's another question. Find the circumference of a circle with radius 10 inches. What I suggest to do is write down the formula first. Circumference equals, now will I want to use 2 pi r or pi d? Remember they both can give us circumference. The answer is in the question. The question gives us a radius, so I'm going to use the radius form of the circumference equation, or circumference formula. So we have 2 times pi times radius, which we can write as 20 pi inches. Now depending on the question, Sometimes leaving our answer as 20 pi inches is the best way to leave our answer. 
Sometimes we'll actually want to multiply that using our calculator to get the approximation because any time we use the, the value of pi we're going to be approximating because it is a never-ending decimal so at some point we'll have to round. We're just going to leave our answer for this question as 20 pi inches. One more question. Find the diameter of a circle with a circumference of 25 feet. Now I want to actually find the diameter when I'm given the circumference. I'm going to do the same thing as I did the last question, in which is to put the formula down, but which formula should I use for circumference? Well, I want to find the diameter, so I'm going to use the circumference formula that uses diameter. Now it says the circumference of the circle is 25 feet. That means we replace C with 25. So now we have 25 equals pi d. This looks a little bit strange until you remember that pi is just a number. It's representing 3.1415 blah blah blah. So we can just do what we would normally do, which is just to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by pi. Notice I haven't put 3.14 anywhere into this problem. It is much better to use the pi symbol and just bring in the actual value of pi when you absolutely have to, which is where we're at right now. The diameter for this question then would be 7.958. 7.958 inches. And now think about your answer. Our diameter is about 8 and our circumference is about 25. The relationship between the two is the diameter should always be about 3 times smaller than the circumference or the other way around the circumference should usually be about three times bigger than the diameter. Three times eight is 24, so our answer makes sense. That's the end of today's notes. If you have any questions, bring them to class and I'll be happy to answer them for you.